Hi, my name is Meredith Mustard, and I am speaking to you from Two Imagine Studios in Farmington, Maine. Um, I'm going to show you how I do image transfer prints from jelly plates. Um, and so let me show you the setup. On this table, I have set out a bunch of images that I've chosen to work with today. And then piles of papers that I will be printing onto, including a bunch of white printer paper, uh, light colored backgrounds, darker colored backgrounds so that I can print contrasting colors, and then some that have a mixture, already have some stuff going on. This is the jelly plate setup. <clears throat> I have some different size, it's eight by 10. What this one is, five by five, six by six. Um, this is that small plate, and this is where I've cut two of them up and put them back together. It's really interesting. And then a larger plate, which is harder to work with. So I'm not gonna be doing anything with that today. So here we are. I have my brayer. I'm gonna go pick some images to work with. Um, I tend to work pretty quickly and intuitively, and I think that is a key to making this all work. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to print onto a light background color. So I'll use contrasting, that is the phthalo turquoise, and I say here is carbon black. I often put a drop of that into these darker colors because it uh, just makes for a better print. And you know, there's a little bit too much paint on there, so I'm going to reach over and I rolled it off onto my roll-off sheets, which are just laid out back there. They're some of the prints that I've made in the past, and um, I'm now gonna just use for cleaning my brayer. Now, took some of that paint off, and I may take a little bit more off. Roll it off. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do, is I love things that have a lot of um, pattern in them. <clears throat> and this looks like it's more than enough. So I'm going to pop it off here. I may have a little bit too much paint on there. Oh, there we go. So it's going to give us some. And on the other end of that, space. Uh, let me see. I have some birds here. So this is a sort of a collage process. Collage it right on the plate. And there we go. Because that's the dark color, I am going to print it onto a light color background. And the reason why I do this is because if I were to print that on a plain piece of paper, it would come out very light. Um, it doesn't transfer as well, but the paint seems to be attracted to going to the base paint on a piece of paper and releasing from the plate. So the plate is really clean now. The image is on here and it's, it's a pretty mixed image. Now, the other way of working is print something. Uh, I'm going to print onto a white paper. Let's see. I'm going to use a lizard crimson. Once again, with a drop of black, which will take away the 
the brightness of the alizarin. It will give you a, a tonal black. All right. Again, I immediately roll off my brayer onto a roll-off sheet. This is a page from a magazine, and they do very well. So sometimes I use a baron to do this, um, but I'm finding that I have some little deep spots on my plates, and if I do it with my fingers, it will release that. So that's where I missed a spot. Um, but here is the image. Now this one needs to dry a little bit, and then I'm gonna put a contrasting color onto it. I'm gonna put Titan Green Pale. I think will be a nice contrast. I just need to give it a, a minute to dry. And then I will be putting that onto a white sheet and you'll see how that works. This is gonna dry. And even though it's not dry right now, if I were to print it right on the white sheet, it would be very faint um, because it's a thin coat of paint. Acrylic dries very quickly and um, it wouldn't transfer very well. And I think that's where sometimes people have a problem. Now, I see a little wet spot, looks like there. But this is pretty much dry. So now I'm putting the contrasting color down over the whole image. If I didn't wait to get it dry enough, some of that color underneath would pick up. And mix and then you wouldn't get such a good thing. Now this is the way I line up. I hold it at each corner and I can feel the corner of the paper under it. I seem to get them pretty well lined up. I used to have a problem with that and they'd always come out crooked, which is another way of doing it. Um, I like the surprises that happen that I'm not in control of everything. But here comes the image. Let's see how beautifully that picks up. Contrasting colors. This is letting the image dry on the plate, putting the wet paint on, taking the print when the second color is still wet. And you get a really nice print that way. So those are two basic ways that I work. Um, okay. Now we're going to print onto a dark background. And in that case, you need a light color. Um, so let me see. Let's try light blue. Now I've mixed this. I've mixed titanium white with some, some blues. Eh, I couldn't tell you exactly which blues I use right now. <clears throat> I just mix until I get something that I like. Oh, this looks pretty opaque. I go over it until I've got a pretty even thing. I'm rolling off my brayer onto those roll-off sheets, and I'm going to print this design. You see how it's very fine line work? Um, aha, there it is off really nicely. I'm going to put it onto a dark background. Ooh, this is another thing you'll see. I'm not hesitant to print on two sides of a paper. If I end up with prints, this one just this big mush. Um, what I can do with it is put it in a pile of roll-off papers and failed prints. And these ones this size are really great for putting into art journals. And look at that. Uh, it will pick up this really fine work. And it needs to be contrasting. But I find it's just lovely onto a black. So I printed this paper. Um, and here's how I print those papers. So I've got the plate. It's got little bits of color on it. Um, and I will now 
make one of those background sheets. I'm just taking paint, rolling it onto the plate. I'm doing this to clean the plate off of any last specks. Um, put it onto a clean white sheet, holding it corner to corner again. Get it to adhere a little bit and then really rub it down with a baron. This is one where I want to get everything I can off the plate. And this gives me a light colored background that I can then print onto. Now you could stop here. I think you've got the basics to do stuff. And I'm going to show one more thing that I really enjoy doing. Let's just work with this. I've got some images here. I'm not sure what I'm going to use. I work very intuitively, so I'll just pull something over and stick it on. What I'm going to try to do is be collaging with different images onto a piece of paper. I often do this with a larger sheet. So I'll have a sheet twice or three times this big, and then I can put images in different places on it and really create something that has an, a collage effect. Okay, let's do Prussian blue. Okay. Off. Now, this is a magazine image. I'm not going to do the whole. There she is. I think what I'm going to do is just have her peeking in from the side. over on the side. We've got a little bit of type, which is fun. Now, um, I think I'm going to take that off of there. And I'm just going to stick it on this page. It's kind of a waste, but there we go. Now, you see, it doesn't all come up. All right, so we're going to do another thing on here. This is the cleaning the plate trick. Whatever's left on that plate, if it's miscellaneous enough that I might be able to just incorporate it into a background sheet, I will take it. So rather than put it on that side, now I just go to the other side. Not a problem. All right, so that will be incorporated into another image at some point. There are just these little shadowy things. Okay, let's see what else we can do here. I have some old cars. I'm gonna see if I can get a good print of that. I'm gonna do it in dark green with a touch of black. mishmashing around here to kind of mix those two colors. And here come the cars. Oh. Okay, that's a hard image to pick up. We did not get that image. And I'm going to clean off this plate, make another background. This is how I accumulate a lot of those background sheets. And they're really nice. Once I have a stack of them, I can choose what I want. 
Anytime you get bored, this is going to go on a little bit. Feel free to um, go and try out what you've already seen. I just want to see if I can pull off this other thing. So there we are. Well, see, it, it did pick up a little bit of the cars. Let's see what else we can do. This is another one. I'm not sure I can get this. I've got some really good images picked up out of this book. Um, let's see what color. Let's do a different color altogether. Let's try red. A little bit more paint. And I'm going for a little more paint on this one because my hit is this is a not a glossy paper that we're going to try to take a transfer off and it will be absorbing a little bit more of the paint so you wish me luck here should have given up before but this is the way it goes you know sometimes you get really good success and sometimes not so much now this is not dry underneath so we're going to get a little bit of a mixed color and this will just be a background sheet once again Um, when I have failures, especially when I have the big sheets and the, and the prints really fail, it just they don't quite come together. I fold them into concertina books, and they're kind of abstract when that happens. I can show you later. You can sort of see that image, but well, unfortunately, it didn't come through. Um, here's a print on a larger piece of sheet, piece of paper that eh, I'm not so happy with has some interesting colors, but when I fold that up into a concertina, you'll just see little portions on each page and, and um, it's very interesting. Okay, I'm pretty sure this one will print and I'm going to print it with teal. Teal is a great, um, color very opaque see how opaque that is Let's see when it prints it really prints I'll take a little bit off in here pulling it off hmm, I could do that side I could do this side I like the the circles baskets may not necessarily see what they are. Oh boy. All right, so what they're gonna come out, these circles. here. I don't want them to come out right on her. I'm going to see if I can I'm really paying attention to how close it gets to her the best I can. can add something else into this with another color but that's one of the ways to collage 
And I think for today that's all. When we come back next time, I can show you how to do, take some of your own photographs and artwork, calligraphy, drawings, um, set them up in a laser printer, print them, a laser print of them, and then do a jelly plate from that so that you can use your own artwork. You don't have to transfer other people's photos and artwork. So hang in there. You can find these on YouTube. Um, search my name, Meredith Mustard, and um, you can see the whole series. Thanks. Bye.